and he yes. was he was a he was a very popular speaker with spiritualists. He himself wasn't a spiritualist. Uh, and I'm trying to think of a quote, but I can't right out of the hand. But uh, I know he did he did speak there for, for spiritualist meetings. Well, there were there were many um, conventions where the free thought movement and the spiritualist movement were considered one and the same. Mm -hmm. And um, the Watkins Convention, for instance, was was also a spiritualist convention. Many of the speakers there were spiritualists, trans mediums. Um, spiritualists did not understand themselves as superstitious. They saw themselves as scientists. They believed that they had physical proof of the next life. This is quite different than faith in the next life. Um, we understand them as gullible. But this was a time when science was becoming popular. And so people did not have, did not have formal training in science. Um, Antoinette Brown Blackwell begins her career um, as the first woman ordained um, in the United States as a Congregationalist minister. And she then um, abandons the church after one year. Uh, she refuses to, to preach infant damnation. And then she becomes a science writer. But she has no, she has no science background. Mm -hmm. but, but the spiritualists and people like Antoinette Brown Blackwell believe they could partake in this, this new emerging discipline. And so they did. Yes? Was there any connection between what was happening over in Britain with the spiritualism yes. movement? And well, you know, it starts it starts in Waterloo, in, in, in Hyattsville, which is is like a suburb of Newark. And if you saw how small Newark was, it's kind of laughable. Um, and then it goes it goes to Waterloo, it goes to Rochester, and then it moves on to um, all of the English speaking world. Canada, um, Australia, England. Um, it it just grew yeah. incredibly quickly. Wasn't Conan Doyle involved? He was. He was an ardent spiritualist. Yeah. Is there any remnants of that left today? In upstate New York, um, you wouldn't know it until you go to Lilydale. Lilydale, New York, is a spiritualist community. Um, all of the people who live there are spiritualist um, mediums. And uh, it's a wild place to visit. <laughs> it is something. Yes. Uh, something interesting. Um, a few weeks back, I had uh, an interesting experience where me and a friend of mine just out of curiosity, but went and had about a, about a 90 minute conversation at the Church of Scientology. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, like, they seem to be spiritualists and have a very strong sense too. Um, well, I'm not going to comment on the whole evil Lord Zeno thing. I think they're a public policy that now if they deny ever having believed it in the first place. But anyhow, uh, aside from that, um, they have this thing where, like, you know, like the, the, the Thetan or the spirit or whatever. Um, it, it is one of their core, it's like their core element, and they like they believe that that you know that, that, that there is a you know there are past lives, and there are going to be future lives, and they and the, the evidence they give for that is the, the, well they say that like they have evidence for that too in the sense that like it, 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 the interesting thing is you have to buy the books that are accompanying like the, 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 they do it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm like they say, it's like the, the way this the person described it to me is. Like she said that she had had personal experiences of past lives, mm -hmm. and I feel I would just say things like, "Well, how would you know that it's a past life? How would you not know it's a, some kind of dream creation that has no basis, or you know, or, or whatever, you know?" And she basically said, "Well, you just know, just like you know that like anything else, like you know that this is a memory of you eating breakfast this morning, or you know that this is a dream, or you know that you're seeing red right now, you know that this is that." And anyhow, and, and then she basically said, "There's techniques you can use to develop them. Buy this book." Well, the spiritualist, the spiritualist, the movement itself, um, with that name, is 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 a distinct movement. But the Shakers had spiritualist tendencies. Um, many of the Protestant denominations began to adopt this. You, you might not call yourself a spiritualist. You might call yourself a Baptist. Um, but you had spiritualist beliefs. Uh, later, uh, the Theosophical movement grows out of this spiritualist beginning. Only they incorporate Eastern mysticism and um, intellectual traditions. Um, Matilda Jocelyn Gage um, played with spiritualism. Um, her son was really aggravated by this. And she wrote to him a scathing letter saying, you know that I experimented everything. She wanted him to understand she wasn't a believer. She was an investigator. And this is what they call themselves, not believers, investigators. Theosophy grows out of this. Um, and uh, a number of other religions, um, philosophical traditions grow out of this. It became a central point. It appeals. Yes? 
Have you heard that the Fox sisters had, had actually immigrated from Canada? I haven't. I have uh, not John heard. Robert Colombo, who is a member of the um, Skeptics mm -hmm. in Toronto, has uh, written a couple of books, I believe, that and he spoke to us on one occasion uh, here uh, the hum among the humanists. And uh, I believe that the uh, Fox sisters were actually from... Uh, Ontario. I'd love for you to write down that information. That's that's very exciting for me. Um, the Fox sisters had a very troubled uh, history. They um, they ended up alcoholics. Now these are little girls. They're teenagers, and they became world famous. Um, of course, really takes them in. People started putting up in big hotels, and you know what? They gave them alcohol. And what happens to a 14-year-old girl who's given all this attention and several bottles of alcohol? <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly what happened. They, they, um, they were party girls, and they eventually they um, denied that they ever um, heard the spirits, that it was them cracking their toe joints. Um, this was all irrelevant, though. For the spirits didn't care. They didn't care if the Fox sisters were legit or not. For them, it was not about the physical manifestation of spirit. It was about the idea of equality of souls, which in the 19th century was a very important issue uh, because it spoke to uh, this growing experimentation with democracy and what does it mean. So when the Post took it, the Fox sisters just went by the wayside. They went and did their bizarre things. And you know, eventually, spiritualism in, in, in one way became extremely bizarre. I mean, people were, you know, the spectral photography is one part of it. People began to manifest fully formed specters out of their orifices, all of their orifices. I mean, this was a very bizarre religious experiment, experience. But on the other hand, the spiritualists, um, many of them were far more intellectual and really, really could give a damn about manifestations. They were much more interested in the expression of what they considered to be free thought. Yes. Another ironic Canadian connection with all of this. Uh, uh, you mentioned John Humphrey Noyes and uh, the Oneida community. Uh, as one of the other traditions within the Oneida community was when each young girl came of age, she would have her first experience with John himself. And eventually the old man reached a state of decrepitude where this was uh, causing a recruitment problem. Yes. So they, uh, <laughs> the, the commune, which was quite prosperous then with their crafts and their silverwork, uh, bought a lovely piece of property on the Canadian side of Niagara Falls, mm -hmm. uh, put up a stone cottage there, and that was where they sent John Humphrey Noyes to live out his retirement. Yeah. And well, now the Oneida mm -hmm. community eventually became the Oneida, the Oneida company that made uh, china and made silverware. <laughs> Uh, for a couple of generations, they tried desperately hard to live down their past and just act like any other corporation. One day they realized they owned this piece of prime land overlooking Niagara Falls and they should really do something with it. Now, the Oneida Corporation was going through kind of an identity crisis and they decided that, of course, what a, what a major silversmithing operation should do is build an observation tower. So that's how the Oneida Tower uh, it was first built, later became Maple Leaf Village. Uh, I think it was the, the third um, last observation tower built on the Canadian side. Uh, Oneida had it for many years, Kodak had it for a while, it became Maple Leaf Village. And in an outcome that would have probably utterly horrified John Humphrey Noyes, it is now the site of the first casino on the Canadian side. <laughs> 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 